In July of 61, the 550th Strategic Missile Squadron at Schilling Air Force Base in Salina received its first Atlas F ICBM. The Atlas F was stored vertically in a hardened underground silo, but had to be raised to the surface before launching, a process which required a minimum of 15 minutes. In September of 1960, operational by the Strategic Air Command, there were now 21 Atlas bases located in northeast and north central Kansas. The placement of uh, missiles uh, in the late 1950s and early 1960s uh, was in part according to a pattern of dispersal. The only realistic uh, a, a attack force that the Soviet Union could have mustered in the 1950s was not missiles, uh, despite uh, Nikita Khrushchev's talk about cranking them out of the factories like sausages. Uh, it was the bombers. Uh, and uh, consequently, the farther you came in from uh, the uh, coasts, uh, the more you would be uh, uh, guaranteed to have some survivable forces. On June 20th, 1962, at Vandenberg Air Force Base, General Dynamics Corporation delivered Atlas Missile Number 57F. It was scheduled to be the first missile flown from an Atlas silo lift launcher. In the field, the Atlas F will be deployed singly, and each will be in its own self-contained launch facility. The complete missile launcher system, including water storage, power supply, liquid oxygen transfer system, and air conditioning equipment, is compactly tailored and fitted to the silo in tiers. Fuel for the rocket is stored aboard the missile. Each of these missile strongholds is built to precise measurements, and every object in them is supported by shock mounts hung from the walls. When the silo is completely buttoned up, it would take a direct hit to put the missile or launcher in a no-go condition. Four days after its arrival at Vandenberg Air Force Base, Air Force personnel, assisted by contractor personnel, mated the Atlas 57F with the operational system test facility for a complete checkout of the whole operational launch system. It was August 10th before the flight test could be made. The countdown began at about 1400 hours Pacific time. The liquid oxygen is put aboard just before the missile is elevated to the surface for launching. The primary objective of this flight test was to determine the adequacy of the new operational facility. At 1411 hours, the missile was launched. The launcher and all support equipment functioned extremely well. However, the missile's autopilot failed to produce the planned roll, and the missile headed off course. After only 68 seconds of flight, the range safety officer had no choice except to destroy the missile. Subsequent investigation showed the failure to be only a random component malfunction and not a system deficiency.